accurate presence detection is crucial for any smart home. Based on it, you can activate automations when someone enter or leave your home or even when change rooms. In this video, I will show you one of the cheapest Raspberry Pis available and free software for Bluetooth presence detection called Monitor. Of course, we will use some help from Home Assistant to unlock all kinds of automations. So, Raspberry Pi, Home Assistant, Monitor and little MQTT communication. Coming up! What's up, Kirill Piaskis here. If you don't know anything about Home Assistant, go check these videos and install one. If you don't have a Raspberry Pi, go grab one. Almost any of the models will do. You can check which exact models are recommended in the video description below. Now, we're going to set up a Raspberry Pi from scratch on a fast pace because it's a pretty straightforward process and you are really smart guys. But don't worry if you have difficulties doing this. You can always ask in the comments below. I personally or some other wonderful guys from our mini community will try to help. Next, we will install and set up the monitor script on our brand new Raspberry. After that, we will involve Home Assistant and some MQTT sensors and presence automations. Now, Let's start this. Download and install Raspberry Pi Imager. Choose OS here. Raspberry Pi OS and choose Raspberry Pi OS Lite because we don't need any graphical interface. We only need the rough operating system of Raspberry. Choose an SD card. You have to plug the SD card first in your computer. Choose the SD card. In my case, it's 8 gigabytes and click on write. It may ask you for your password. Just enter it and enjoy the writing. When the writing is finished, click continue and unplug and plug again your SD card into your computer. Open your file explorer and open the boot partition of the SD card. We have to create two files here. The first one will be called SSH without any extension. I'll copy one of the existing text files and I'll rename it to SSH. I'll also open this file and I'll delete the content and I'll save it. Okay, I'm ready with that. This file is needed in order to be able to connect to our new Raspberry over SSH protocol without having to add a monitor, keyboard or mouse to it. The next file that we have to add in order to Raspberry to connect to our existing Wi-Fi. I'll copy these lines and I'll return back to our folder. I'll open our newly created file and I'll paste the content inside. Just like that. I have to change this to my SSID name. And here I have to type my Wi-Fi password. I'll have to save this file as this name wpa underscore supplicant.conf Okay, I'm ready, save. Okay, and I have to have at the end two files. The first one is SSH without any content, without any extension. And the second one is wpa underscore supplicant.conf with my Wi-Fi name and password inside. Now I can safely unplug my SD card and plug it into my Raspberry Pi 0W and power it on. After a minute or so, you can try to connect to it using the SSH. If you are on Linux or Mac OS, you can use exactly the same command. SSH Pi as a username and the Pi IP. You can get the Raspberry Pi IP from your router. Default password is a Raspberry. 
And now I will follow the instructions from the monitor GitHub page. This is the monitor GitHub page. You can change the default Raspberry Pi password using this command, but I'll skip this for now. And I'll go directly here. I'll copy the first command and I'll paste it. Space and end. Second command. Again, the same characters. Third command. And command to reboot the Raspberry Pi. In this way, these commands will be executed one by one. So I'll just hit enter and I'll wait. The Raspberry Pi will be rebooted after everything is executed. After the Raspberry Pi is rebooted, I'll just log in again. And I'll execute the following command to install the Bluetooth drivers. They are already the newest version, so I'll skip this whole step. I'll skip this reboot. And now I'm going to install Mosquito. Okay, we have our Raspberry Pi 0W up and running and ready to work. We are not going to make the Raspberry waiting too much because we are going to install Mosquito. Mosquito is one of the most popular MQTT brokers available. It is needed for the monitor script to communicate with the rest of the world and to announce who's home and who's not. It's just a matter of copy and pasting. These commands will actually download and install Mosquito on your Raspberry Pi 0W. Mosquito is found and I'll update and I'll finally install it with this command. Hit yes here and I'll just wait for the installation to finish. After that I'll have a MQTT broker installed. I think we have everything needed for the monitor script installation. Let's install that monitor on the Raspberry Pi 0W. Mosquito MQTT broker is now installed and I'll continue with installing of monitor script. This is to change the directory to your home directory and I'll install git. I guess I already have this, but let's see. No, I don't have it, so I'll install git client. The next step will be to clone the GitHub repository of monitor to my local device, to the Raspberry Pi 0W. A few moments later. Git client is installed, so I can continue with cloning the monitor GitHub. This is done. I have the source code now, so I can enter in monitor directory. Mm, that way, CD monitor. Mm, I'll not do that. This is to go to the beta features of the monitor script, but I want the stable version, so I'll skip this. And now directly try to run monitor using this command sudo bash monitor sh. Monitor servers is not installed. The install service, yes. Public MAC addresses list, file created, and some symlinks. I'll execute this command to edit the Mosquito preferences. In the MQTT preferences file are stored all of the needed settings for the MQTT broker. Here I can change my username and password for my MQTT broker, as well as the address. But I'll leave everything as it is and I'll try it that way. And if it's needed, I'll change some of these values later. So I'll just exit and I'll edit now the non static address file where I can add my devices that I wanted to track. 
We can now add our devices that we want to monitor. We just have to edit the known static addresses file in the monitor configuration. I will put it right here. If you're using iOS device, you can go to settings, general, about, and here in this menu you can find your Bluetooth MAC address. I will copy this and now directly paste it in my laptop as alias I will type my phone and I will save the file. That's it. You should add every device that you want to track in this known static address file with its MAC address, the Bluetooth MAC address and an alias. I just saw something important. These packages are missing so I have to install them before I continue further. This is the first one and the second one is this BC so I'll just type this command and a few seconds later I have these packages installed and I'll I can now try again to start the monitor script and I have another error here saying that I have to customize my MQTT broker settings and especially my address so I'm going to do that sudo nano MQTT preferences and now replace this IP with this one because the MQTT broker and monitor are installed on one and the same Raspberry. The rest of the settings I will not change for now. I'll try again to start the monitor script. I have now some warnings saying that I have to change my username and password but no errors which is good and if I Enter minus V. I can see that monitor is in starting mode. I'll just try to run the monitor script without the minus V flag again. You can use the monitor script on several Raspberry Pi devices to track your movement within your home more accurately. This is well explained by Andrew, which is the author of the monitor script. Heads down, Andrew, you did a wonderful job with monitor. Just keep up. You can find the monitor GitHub link in the video description below. Okay, I did some tests and now I'm about to show them the results to you. I'll control C the monitor script and I'll start it again. You see here that monitor Raspberry phone topic is created and my phone confidence is 100 points. The monitor script also find my device name and the brand which is very good to double check if everything is fine on the MQTT site. I'll start this MQTT Explorer which is a free tool available for all major operating systems and I'll create a new connection. I'll name the connection RP0W and as a host I'll enter my Raspberry IP address. I'll click save and then connect. And when I expand this I'll see the monitor topic Raspberry and phone with confidence points. So that means the MQTT part is fine, everything is ok and now I can try the Home Assistant. Time to join Home Assistant into our Raspberry Pi and monitor party. We are going to add MQTT sensors in Home Assistant. The output of these sensors will give us an accurate numerical occupancy confidence data that we are going to use in Home Assistant automations. Are you ready? Okay, this is my home assistant and the first thing that I'm going to do is to add the MQTT integration. I'll move this window a bit to click the add integration button. I'll search for M MQTT. I'll enter my Raspberry Pi IP address and I'll type any user and password because I didn't enable the authentication of my MQTT broker which 
is only good for testing purposes. Configuration created. Finish. Now I can edit the configuration.yaml file of this Home Assistant. This is it. I'll open it. And now I'll paste this YAML code inside. I'll first create a sensor section. And I'll paste the YAML below this section. I'll change the topic to match mine topic. I'll get it from this monitor locks. Just like that. And I'll change the name from first floor to something else like Kirill phone. And I'm ready. I'll save this. I could also add this minmax sensor as well. I'll remove these three lines and I'll change this to Kirill phone as well. I think I'm ready. These are the automations. So I'll save this by clicking Command and S on Mac. And I'll go to Configuration, Server Control, Check Config. I have an error. Sensor is with 1S. So I have to fix this. I'll save this again. And I'll check config. Now it's OK. And I can restart my Home Assistant now. I'll try to add the newly created sensors to my Home Assistant Lovelace. Edit dashboard. Add card. Entity. And I'll search for Kirill. This is it. Sensor Kirill iPhone. I'll move this a bit. I'll click Continue, Add to Lovelace. And the next sensor, which is pretty similar. Occupancy, Home Occupancy, Confidence. This is it. Add to Lovelace. As you can see, both of the sensors are working and showing the 100% confidence because my phone is within the Raspberry Pi Bluetooth range. We have our sensors in Home Assistant that are using MQTT platform to receive data from Raspberry Pi with monitor installed. We can use these sensors however we want. Let's see one very simple automation. Now I will continue forward and I'll create these automations. I'll need an input boolean or helper. To do this helper, I'll go to configuration helpers and I'll create one. The type will be toggle and the name will be occupancy. Okay, now go to automations. And I'll add one. Start with an empty automation. This will be occupancy on. The trigger will be numeric state. The entity will be my occupancy confidence sensor. And when is above 10%. Call this service input balance service turn on and entity will be my occupancy helper. I'll hit save and I'm ready with the first automation and I'll need another one very similar to that occupancy on so I'll use this duplicate automation. And I'll change very few things here. The name will be occupancy of. 
this will be below 10 percent and the service will be input button turn off the entity will be the same I'll hit save and now I should have two automations occupancy on and occupancy off I'll also add the helper on my dashboard I'll search again by entity here it is my occupancy helper and I'll click continue add to Lovelace currently the occupancy helper or input button is turned off which is not correct because my home occupancy is 100% we will manually change this one time but from now on it should work so let's test this I will put my phone on flight mode This will disable every communication of the device, simulating that it is not at home currently. And monitor script will have to detect that and to decrease the confidence to zero. I'll open the terminal window as well to check what will happen here. So when the confidence goes below 10%, the automation will be activated and the occupancy toggle will be disabled and I have to see these values changed on these home assistant sensors as well so let's wait a bit and to see what will happen a few moments later the confidence is now 90 60 0 very good and as you can see everything is working as well in home assistant the occupancy helper or input bullion is disabled as well as the both sensors are showing zero. You can use these sensors and these helpers to trigger any kind of automations now using monitor, Raspberry Pi Zero W and Home Assistant which is really really great. Let's quickly test what will happen if I disable the flight mode and all communications of my phone will be restored. The monitor should detect this very quickly, confidence 100% and here everything on home assistant part is also working. The occupancy toggle is turned on and the sensors are displaying 100%. Very good! Any sort of engagement on this channel does really help a lot with the YouTube algorithm. So make sure that you hit the subscribe, like and bell buttons if you enjoyed this video. Also, feel free to add me on Twitter by searching for this username. I'm trying to post there frequently. You can also find me on my Discord server as well. If you want to secure this channel existence, you can become one of my supporters. You can see exactly how in the video description below. If you're just entering the smart home world, you could also buy my digital guide called Smart Home Getting Started Actionable Guide. I really hope that you find this information useful and you now know more about the Raspberry Pi Zero W monitor script and home assistant for presence detection. Stay safe and don't forget, home smart but not hard. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.